Good evening, everyone. My name is Andrea Shea, and I am the Director of Loyalty for Celebrity. Uh, welcome to our very first live virtual cooking demo. I am thrilled to be here tonight with all of you. This is an intimate event reserved for our most loyal Captain Club and Blue Chip members, and we're all very excited to have you with us. As you likely already know, Celebrity's culinary offering is second to none, and it's a very important part of our guest experience, and it's often cited as one of the main reasons that our guests choose Celebrity Cruises. Our menus are crafted by Michelin starred chef Cornelius Gallagher. They're inspired by the regions that we visit. Uh, they feature food made from scratch using top quality ingredients. And we partner with some of the best, best chefs in the world, including Michelle. Um, without further ado, I want to move along so that we can get to the actual cooking demo. But before I do that, hello, Josh, how are you? Very good evening, and thanks so much, Andrea, for a wonderful tee up, and good evening to everybody out there. It's absolutely wonderful and an honor to uh, welcome you and to introduce our guest chef tonight, who's going to be cooking one of her signature dishes tonight. Um, as Andrea mentioned, we love showcasing exotic destinations and the culinary, um, the culinary experience that comes along with them. As a part of that, we love inviting local chefs to showcase their their skills on board uh, and to integrate with our with our current co pro programming. Um, over the years, we've had the pleasure of welcoming Chef Michelle on board a number of our sailings. Um, we're happy to always welcome her on board. I'll have to digress for just a moment. I hope uh, I hope Andrea, you can forgive me and, and just tell a quick story. Uh, in the eight years that I've been your director of culinary operations, I've been really excited. Um, to host a number of chefs on board our ships. Chef Michelle in particular is a standout chef because of her very easy integration into the team. I don't think there's been a single chef um, that has been so uh, easy to work with, so seamless um, in her interactions with the crew on board and with her recipes. Uh, she's an amazingly talented chef and it's always a pleasure uh, to have her on board to showcase her demonstrations um, and, and showcase a few of her dishes. Chef Michelle's a James Beard Award winner, which is a really big deal in the food and beverage world. Um, she's a cookbook author. Her, her book is Cuisine a Latina. Uh, she operates a, a very successful catering company, um, as well as, a, as her newest endeavor, which is called Cafe La Trova, uh, which is a Cuban-inspired bar here in Miami. Um, Chef Michelle has also recently been doing work with Chef Jose Andreas, uh, and his um, and his uh, uh, endeavors uh, to assist uh, the, the the community uh, under the unfortunate circumstances surrounding the pandemic um, with World Central Kitchen, uh, her catering company has been providing hot meals weekly, uh, specifically to the at-risk community in Miami. So um, it's really an honor to have uh, this partnership with Chef Michelle. And uh, without further ado, I'm excited to, uh, for her to take over. Um, and I hope you very much enjoy cooking along with her tonight. Thank you, Josh. Hi, everyone. What a pleasure to have you in my kitchen. Um, don't be shocked. It's not that big. I actually love smaller kitchens. Um, none of the kitchens that I have actually owned, uh, any of the restaurants that I have had, have always been very little kitchens, we call them um, on the ships, we call them galleys. But uh, I love everything nice and tight and to be able to rub elbows with everyone. Speaking of rubbing elbows, just so you know, um, I do have two golden doodles here with me. And if they start getting really obnoxious, we are going to put them in my bedroom. Uh, I also have a nine-year-old that is floating around somewhere. I think he's on a bike with my husband. He might be coming around <laughs> later, we'll see. I don't know, you know, Zoom is crazy. Um, this is all very personal. Uh, we have opened ourselves completely uh, to everyone, to all of you, and what an honor to be with you all here today. I absolutely adore working with, I don't even call it work, what we do with celebrity. I mean, it is, an honor. I'm humbled. We have so much fun. Uh, we as a family get to travel on the ships and, and we've gotten to know all of the staffs that, um, that are on our ships and, and that work uh, fearlessly um, on the ground and everybody is just delightful. And so what an honor to be here with all of you 
Oscar, don't complain. Sorry, he smells the steak. So anyway, um, I guess we should get started. And I know that there will be questions. So um, by all means, ask away. No question is too great or too small, um, unless it's something I can't answer. And then I'll just be perfectly honest that I just can't answer. So we are going to do something called reverse steak, reverse sear steak. And it's kind of funky. We're actually going to put this gorgeous. Now, I tried to get a New York, but I went local. I went to a little sh shop in Miami Shores, which is right nearby me. They always have the best meat. They're called proper sausage. Anyway, um, I couldn't find a New York, so I got a ribeye but it's gorgeous and it's prime and we're going right into the oven because we're going to, what this is called again is reverse sear. And so we're actually going to cook it up to a very rare temperature uh, and very low. My oven is only at about 250 degrees. And so we're going to bring it up to temperature very slowly, very, very slowly so that it will probably be one of the most beautifully cooked steaks that you can make at home. Now we all know, that we're not on board any of the fancy ships um, where they have incredible equipment or uh, a steakhouse where again has crazy broilers that they can go really high but this is going to be a beautiful steak to make at home so we're going to get let that go um you know what i'm going to set a timer for 20 minutes so hang on one second hey siri set a timer for 20 minutes 20 minutes and counting. Great. All right. So we're all set. So the next thing I want to do, my favorite food to eat with steak is actually Caesar salad. I know that's very traditional of me and classic, but I have to tell you, that's my go-to. That's what my husband and I absolutely love. And so this is what he will be eating on Valentine's Day, though doesn't know it yet. Um, so of course, for any good Caesar salad, you need a great crouton. So what I've done is I've bought one of my favorite breads um, from a very local bakery called Sullivan Street, which they actually happen to have in New York too. But wherever it is that you go, get a nice sourdough or a good baguette, a good crusty uh, piece of bread that I've cut into these. I think that's about a eh, half an inch piece. Uh, oh, you know what, Amanda, I'm sorry. Amanda, get into the camera and say hi to everybody. My beautiful masked assistant. Um, so Amanda works with me and um, we're keeping our distance and uh, because I had to be unmasked, of course, to talk to you all today. And so, um, hey Amanda. Anyway, so <laughs> she'll be in and out helping me a little bit with the computer today and bringing it with me. So anyway, croutons. All right, so I'm just gonna, I have my stainless steel pan. This is just an all clad pan. I use them a lot. I also have a cast iron for the meat, but for now I have, um, the stainless pan and I'm just going to add a little bit of olive oil to it and people ask me all the time what olive oil do you like I use I like whatever I have for the day so people are always sending me different brands of olive oil I don't know this one is really nice my favorite favorite ones right now this week happen to be um, Olio Verde um, I love this one Herida de Porio this one is from Spain I don't know. I just, I love a little bit of heat and spiciness to my oils. Not a chili oil, of course, just, um, you know, a, a good spicy olive. I'm going to add the croutons to the pan and uh, a couple of smashed garlic cloves as well to the pan. Now, if you want to, I love seasoning the bread now so that as it crisps up, it will actually be a seasoned breadcrumb. So go ahead and add some salt and cracked black pepper to your croutons. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into the Caesar salad dressing, all right? So uh, I'm gonna use an immersion uh, blender. Uh, this is an immersion blender, just so you guys know. Uh, this is what I'll be using to blend my dressing. If you only have a stand-up regular blender, like, this type, uh, obviously this one is huge because this is um, a professional one, but if you have a regular blender, by all means, use that. That's actually perfect. So I'll be using this to blend everything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add everything into a little container and blend it up. So for my dressing, I have 
One at you. This is Maria, and we have got some eager folks already who are wanting to ask questions, but I want to know if they can use avocado oil instead. Could we do that? Of course you can. As a matter of fact, it might even turn into a beautiful green hue. Uh, you know, this is basically making mayonnaise. So uh, it might turn a beautiful green color, which is extremely appetizing and quite beautiful and delicious. Avocado oil is fabulous. Yes, please. Oh. I love it as well. So Michelle, I don't want to ask you the state questions because I'm sure you're going to um, address that when it comes out. But a lot of folks do want to know, did you season it before? Did you have the steak out at room temperature for a while? Those kind of questions. And those are fabulous questions. Thank you. So I haven't se seasoned my steak as of yet. We will season it before we sear it. Right now, I left it out for 20 to 30 minutes. I think it was closer to 30 to let it come to more of a room temperature before I put it in the oven. And then I have a thermometer, which I'm going to see. I would like it to come up to about 110 to 112 degrees if if I can. We'll see what, where we get into 20 minutes. And then we're going to sear it and we don't have to go into the oven again. And it should be quite beautiful. And it also retain a lot of its juices, which is why I'm doing it. Well, I can already smell it. That's fantastic. And Michelle, we have a really interesting interesting question from Bill and Mary. Um, they are very interested in finding out a little more about sous vide, the steak uh, process. And if you would uh, season the steak well before or just prior to sous vide them or being seared. Okay, so that's a, a lovely question about sous vide. So we, we do sous vide quite a bit of steaks. We try not to salt. Um, because it actually uh, removes a lot of the blood when you salt the meat. It tends to kind of release its um, its liquids, um, its juices. And so we do not season before we sous vide. What we do is we sous vide, and we like to sous vide in butter at a really nice low temperature. And then it's basically doing what we're doing right now in the very low oven. And then you would season it before you sear it. Does that answer the question? Yes, it does. I think it does. Bill, if you can let us know if that answered the question, please. And let's please. get back to your uh, salad dressing or preparing the croutons. What was it that you smashed right after the croutons? We have a few folks that are following along. Okay, so there's smashed garlic with the oil and the bread that are in my pan. And I'm just kind of flipping it around, waiting for them to get really nice and golden. I have it at a nice kind of medium low temperature. I want to take my time to get them really nice and crispy. And then so far in here, uh, where I'll be blending, I have thus far Dijon mustard, garlic, and an egg yolk. The only acid I'll be using for my dressing will be fresh squeezed lemon. Beautiful. So Michelle, while you're doing that, can you tell us a little bit about how you started your career in cooking and in being a chef? Can you tell us a little bit about that? I think everyone would be really interested in knowing. Uh, of course. So um, I actually started uh, another profession before I began this one. I was a professional ballerina and um, being of, of you know Latin and Jewish, everything in our home was either around food or guilt. So I chose the food over the guilt. And my mother was an incredible cook. She was from Argentina and she used to make the most delicious, beautiful Italian, Argentine, sometimes a little Jewish foods. Um, and I always wanted to cook like her. So that's really where I began the home cooking. And then eventually um, when I got back from dancing uh, in New York with a, with a company, um, I chose to study biochemistry and nutrition. I happened to have a little bit of a science side to my brain. Um, but the whole time I studied, I really wanted to learn more about the chemistry of food. So I went to culinary school to learn about the chemistry of food. And I fell in love with how horrible the lifestyle was. <laughs> I'm kidding. I just, it was actually pretty terrible, but I loved it. I loved that um, we were working, just trying to, to be competitive with our own selves, trying to get better constantly. And then the food getting to people's, you know, in front of people's faces and seeing the expressions and seeing 
you know, how pleased people can be with a simple plate of food and how you can change someone's day and, and week and month just with a delicious plate of food. So I, I'm very proud to have caused a lot of great memories for people in their lifetime. And that's really what it's all about. That is so wonderful. And I'm sure you've traveled all over the world. Where did you actually train? Uh, I'm adding, just so you know, I'm adding a little bit of anchovy to the dressing, um, and then I'll jump into that question. So I, um, for cooking, I've been, uh, let's see, I trained in the south of France for a while. Um, I trained in um, Malaysia, Japan, Tokyo, eh, that is Japan, sorry, uh, Hong Kong and Thailand, um, uh, uh, all around this country. Some of the best work I did though was honestly to work in New York and to work at La Bernardin back in the day. Um, and that was amazing. And then my mentor was Jean-Louis Paladin, who was the chef at the Watergate and who just had an illustrious, incredible career. And he's the one that really sent me to France. And so, um, yeah, I've gotten around a little bit, but it's always been incredible. Real quick, I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this mixture because if you ever make either mayonnaise or Caesar dressing, you'll notice that it gets really thick and obnoxious. So if you add just a little bit of water before you even start the blending process, before you add the oil to it, which is the thickener, obviously the emulsifier, um, it comes out a lot nicer, better texture. Uh, a little shot of Worcestershire because it's in front of me and I'm using it for the steak sauce um, for the au poivre later. I just, I love it. I'm adding a little bit of salt and pepper, and then I'll start blending with the oil. Um, I'm hoping it won't be too loud that you can still ask me a question. Now, Michelle, we're going to be sending everybody these recipes, and all the ingredients will be in there because we've got a lot of questions about that. But just curious because I love the Caesar dressing, but I don't like anchovies. So when you mix it like that, does it puree it? Just go without the anchovy if you want to. It's perfectly fine doesn't matter, um, but I am pureeing it so you'd never know it was in there, uh, but yes. And just so you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna emulsify this with two kinds of oil. I've decided to go with a little bit of extra virgin as well as some canola. Wait, is it canola? No, it's grapeseed. That's usually my favorite. So I'm using grapeseed oil and um, extra virgin olive oil, and it will be a little bit loud. So give me just a couple minutes for this. Absolutely. <laughs> As you can see, the stream is really thin because if you were to add it very quickly, it would what we call break the dressing and it would not thicken. And now I'm going to switch to olive oil. That's actually a very quiet mixer. Well, the, the hand blenders are always a little bit more quiet than the stand-up kind. That's fantastic. All right, so this is getting nice and thick, but not too thick because of the water, which I appreciate. I never like the Caesar salad to be too thick. It drives me crazy if you can stand up a spoon in your Caesar dressing. I find that to be a little weird. Are there any options, Michelle, other than using a raw egg yolk? Yes. Well, to do that. With you, if you were to cook some shallot and some garlic in oil, there we go, it's about as thick as I'd like it, um, and then use those at the beginning with the mustard and your acid, you will actually get a nice emulsification. Your emulsification won't hold as much as it would with the egg yolk, sorry, without the egg yolk, but you would still get a beautiful emulsification. I would just be even slower and more slight with the oil, just go really, really slow, and you'll see it will thicken. Just like a beautiful French vinaigrette, if you've ever made a French vinaigrette, 
you actually don't usually use egg in it. You use the mustard as the emulsifier. So if you want, just add a tad more mustard and we should be fine. All right, so to this, I'm gonna add some Parmesan cheese. And if it were up to me, honestly, I, I'd just throw the whole thing in, but um, that would be a little much, I guess, for a lot of people. So I'm just gonna go little by little. And you never want to put it in when you're blending. You always want to put it in after because it will break if you add the cheese. And so let me show you the, the consistency because it's not crazy thick. I love it when it's like this. You see how, the, how that is? So it's, it's thickened, but it's not as thick as a mayonnaise would be. It's still a nice vinaigrette. So that is, that is your Caesar dressing. And then uh, the croutons. How are we doing on time? Five minutes. Five minutes, perfect. So we really want to crisp these up. Now is the perfect time to ask me some questions while we wait for the steak. Okay, great. So tell us what your favorite cuisine is to cook, Michelle. Oh, I don't have one. I love that I can do anything any night. The only thing I really don't do at home, I don't do sushi because, I mean, it's not going to be as good as going to one of my favorite sushi restaurants. So what I do do, however, my son is a, um, a little bit of a picky eater. And so um, I do keep some nori sheets around because we all love seaweed in the house. And so I dry them in a toaster just very quickly, briefly, and I always have a little bit of sushi rice ready for him. So I give him, I hand him, uh, basically in his hand almost, I give him, some nori and then I put a little bit of sticky rice and some nova some smoked salmon and then he rolls it up and he eats it but I would never make sushi because I I don't make it as good as the professionals nor would I be able to buy that kind of fish home at home um obviously I could buy it in the restaurant but I would never steal from the restaurant well not always well um, I'm starting to get really hungry here I can even smell the steak already so Michelle Tell us about your favorite experience on board Celebrity, uh, being our celebrity chef. What were some of your favorite moments? Oh my goodness, um, I have so many. So I've met incredible people um, on the ship. And um, once, I have so many memories. One time uh, a gentleman came up to me, we were doing a little um, photo shoot, you know, bringing uh, anybody on board um, who wanted to come and take a picture with the celebrity chefs, uh, we would bring them on and we would take, Zach, you want to say hi to everybody? Yeah, we Just really, you can have that and put that over there, but you have to come and say hi first. If you come say hi, you can have the juice. Hi. Say hi. 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 I'm sure everybody is waving to you right now. <laughs> All right, have your juice. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, so where was I? Yes. So the pictures and a gentleman started to talk to me and he said, you know, I heard you speaking in your cooking class and um, is your father, was your father truly in World War II? And I said, well, yes, he was. We're very proud of him and he was in World War II and, you know, he's at the time he was, I think he was 90 or 91. Um, and he said, well, would you can I meet him? We do something where we bring veterans to Washington, D.C., and um, we salute them and, and we make a beautiful, memorable 24 hours for them. And, you know, it was something I, I'd never heard of, something I didn't even know was possible, and they made it happen for me. And just because they met me on a celebrity chef and I was their chef for the day, they gained enough, I guess, confidence and, and, um, I don't know, a relationship with them for that to happen. So that was amazing. Um, my son, my husband and I, we always go, um, you know, frolicking around on the ships quite a bit. We end up in the discos with headphones on, dancing. We love the, the real mass. Um, Silent disco, everybody's favorite, Silent disco. <laughs> we love the real grass. We love to lay in the real grass um on the on the top floor uh and and just kind of laying in the grass taking funny pictures and running around and uh we love the glass blowing classes 
Um, we love the dining room where you get to sit with, you know, new people and meet all kinds of new people and interesting people from all over the world. We've actually made friends for life on the last two ships that we were on. People we had never met before are now what we consider to be our closest friends. And you can never have enough friends, right? And, and it's just been the most incredible um, relationship to be on board. And then lastly, although not really lastly, but I'm sure you don't want to hear me um, wax on so much, but um, one of the times I was on the ship, um, one of the cooks uh, surprised me and made me an Indian feast. And oh, uh, one of the most heartwarming um, meals of my life and delicious. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Now, Michelle, a quick question. Do you prefer gas or electric range? I love that question. So what you're seeing right now is an induction range. It's not electric. Um, I do not like I do not love electric ranges. I deal with them if I have to. The reason why I have induction is because in my little neighborhood, they actually do not have gas. Uh, so if I were to have my absolute favorite choice, number one would be gas. And then uh, number two would be induction. And the great thing about the induction stove is that it boils within 11 seconds. So oh, that's great. I'm gonna take the temperature of the meat real quick. Sure. Here we are. Okay, so I can't believe it. This never really happens in real life, but I got the temperature. Uh, it's crazy, you know, whenever I do these demonstrations, it's not like TV, where when I do television, it's like, oh, look at the magic, magic of television. My steak is up to temperature, but it actually is. So I'm so excited. Uh, I'm gonna put this over here. And I'm gonna heat up my cast iron skillet. So my croutons are actually really crispy. I'm gonna set them aside, put them in a little bowl. All right, so I have a cast iron skillet. I don't know if you can see it because it is black and it's, it, it, sorry about the dogs. It, it is black and it's on a black stove. Um, but anyway, um, and always make sure that you have a really nice clean cast iron uh, that you cure it, that you heat it, that you scrub it with salt when it's hot, that you oil it um, after every time you use it. You never want to soak it, by the way. Um, even though things might stick to it when you use it, you'll always be able to scrub it clean with heat. Um, you never want to put water in it and just like leave it overnight like you do sometimes with your dishes. Um, so I'm going to put this at about a, about a medium high heat. And I'm going to put a little bit of oil. This is grapeseed oil. And by the way, the reason why I use grapeseed oil so much, number one, it's healthy. And number two, it has an incredibly high smoking point. So I can keep it really, it's wonderful for frying. Uh, and so you can really get it up to temperature and not worry about the smoking, which denatures the oil. Oh, Come here. Come on. Come say hi, everybody. So this is a really loud one. <laughs> So cute. Oh my goodness. <laughs> There's a quiet one. She's back there. All right. So we're coming to temp. Um, I'm going to take the steak. And what I'm going to do is, can you come closer over here? Sure. Let me show everybody. I'm actually going to season um, the steak now really well with salt and pepper. So this is a ribeye, like I said before. You would do the exact same thing with a New York strip. And I don't know if you can tell that it has a bit of the cooking process all the way around it, but not in the center. Um, so this is exactly how I cook prime rib as well, painfully slowly, um, because what you don't want is that ring around a slice of meat that is dark on the outside and really pink on the inside. You want the whole thing to almost be the same color. Oscar, does that smell good? Huh? Now you're going crazy, sweetheart, I'm sorry. All right, um, I always use kosher salt, just so you know. All right, what we're gonna do is 
I'm gonna put the steak in the pan at the same time as a little bit of butter to caramelize. Michelle, if someone is allergic to beef, is it possible to use another protein such as chicken? If someone's allergic to beef? Yep, if you're allergic to beef, is it possible to use the same method uh, for a boneless chicken, for example? Um, well, if can um, that lovely person eat bison, possibly, or maybe some game meat? And if not, of course, chicken's always delicious. Um, you know, I personally love darker birds as well, uh, like duck breasts or squab even. Quail is delicious. So the closer you get to the darker color is going to be obviously closer to an actual red meat, um, if you're interested to get closer to that color. All right, really quickly, I want to just um, take a little bit of the butter and baste the steak, because this is really what chefs do. Now, basting is really hard on induction, so you're going to hear a lot of beeping, and I apologize. So what we're looking for is a lot of color. We're looking for a nice golden brown um, on both sides of the steak. So, ooh, wow, this is getting colored really quickly and really beautifully. Um, and what I love about this cooking method that I'm teaching you is that you're not going to get all of that juice that's in the steak to leak out afterwards as much as you would uh, if you were just searing the steak like you normally do. And don't go away because I'm going to teach you all how to make a delicious sauce au poivre, which is a green peppercorn sauce in the same pan. So we're not getting another pan dirty. So let's take a look at the color. Look how beautiful. Let me see if this helps at all. Um, does that help a little bit so you can see the color of the stage? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so again, I'm going to baste. Basting is really so important when you're cooking meat to really get an even color and even clear. And it just makes everything delicious. If you wanted to, you could add some whole fresh rosemary or thyme into this butter as well, if you wanted to give it that flavor um, to your meat. But I thought we could do something a little more simple today for our first cooking segment together. And then of course the sauce is gonna have a lot of flavor in it as well. Andrew says this looks absolutely delicious. Will this be available on board when sailing resumes? We miss celebrity cruises. <laughs> I love it. I miss it too. And that answer, I think Josh can answer that question about the steak, but I don't see why not. <laughs> All right, that's almost done. And we're going to let it rest for a moment. And then we're going to start our sauce. So we've achieved this beautiful color on both sides of the meat. So we're going to have, go ahead and let this rest right here and set it aside and um, we'll get a little piece of aluminum foil and go ahead and just kind of cover it so it stays nice and warm. All right, so I'm gonna empty just a little bit of the fat that's in this pan. I have a little ramekin right here. And I'm only keeping what is about a one to two tablespoons of fat left in the pan now. And we're going to go ahead and add some very tiny diced shallots. We call that a brunoise, which is about an eighth of an inch dice of shallot. And I'm going to add a little bit of crushed black peppercorn for flavor. And then these are green peppercorns. They are found in a brine, um, like a saline type of a brine, and they can be found in a lot of um, 
more kind of gourmet shops. Go ahead and add that in. And the fumes are delicious, but just be careful because it might make you cough a little bit because of the black pepper. All right. Next, I'm going to add some red wine. I'm a little fancy right now. I'm using some Camus. It's delicious, but I would only use a wine that I would drink with or, or I would drink um, in my sauces. So just a little bit. And if you wanted to, instead, traditionally, you can use a little brandy, bourbon, or cognac in your au poivre sauce. That's really what traditionally is used, but it's up to you. As you see, I've got some really big bubbles all the way around, which means that we are reducing almost all the way down. That's what those big bubbles mean. <coughs> that made me cough. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of beef broth. You can use beef stock, purchase beef broth, you can even use some chicken stock, doesn't matter. Michelle, we've had a few people say they can't find green peppercorn in brine. So tell them to um, either go to, now does everybody basically live all over the country? And They do. Yeah, so um, if they don't have a gourmet store, they can go online on Amazon. You can pretty much buy, as you all know, everything. Um, and I actually have been desperate in, in my day and, and gone to Amazon and gotten green peppercorns and brine through Amazon. And what's great about them is you just use a little bit and then you keep them in their brine and they last forever. They never go bad and you'll never use the amount. I don't know if I have them around anymore. I think we put them away, but you'll never use the amount that, uh, that you buy. It's a small little can. Here we go. That's okay, we can just show it to them like that. So I keep it in this little container now, and I'm gonna keep this for years. Um, and it always stays great, which is wonderful. They look like capers. That's great. So we let really reduce down. Let's go ahead and make our salad. And by that time, we'll add a little bit of cream to our sauce and finish it. I love um, Hearts of Romaine and we, we always wrap everything in um, something called the sports towel or even a paper towel, nice, damp, cold, damp paper towels. It keeps nice and fresh. So I love when I have, um, when I used to have dinner parties more, and now when I prepare dinner for the family, I try to really get myself, prepare myself to be a little bit ahead because I have like 12 jobs. And so um, I always like to just have dinner ready the day before. And so I keep my lettuce, just so you know, in these paper towels and it lasts a really long time. All right, so I have my lettuce. I'm going to add some of our Caesar dressing. And if, of course, if you wanna add more cheese, by all means, do so now. There we go. And then I keep my leaves whole um, just because I love the presentation of it uh, and I don't chop them. But if you would rather a chopped Caesar salad, by all means, that, you know, go for it. And then we've got these delicious croutons that are really so crispy. They're not hot anymore. Add those to the mix. And then like I said, if you want to top it with a little bit more cheese, go ahead and do so. I'm not adding any salt and pepper to this because I already added it to the vinaigrette and I don't need it. Well, I'm lying. You know what? My husband loves black pepper. I'm going to add a little black pepper to the lettuce. There we go. All right. So that's ready. Let's check our sauce because I think this is, yeah, this is where we want it to be. It's really nice and getting good and thick. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of cream to this. And as you'll see, it will come together very quickly. It will need a nice pinch of salt because you have a lot of the acid from the wine and then the fat from the heavy cream. 
Remember, you have a ton of pepper in there, so don't put any more pepper. I'm gonna get myself a little tasting spoon so I can try it. Did we ever grab a plate for the snake? Mmm. Oh my goodness, that's delicious. <laughs> I love when things work. So I made it pretty, whew, pretty black pepper forward, but we love that in this house. Um, if you have a little bit more of a sensitive palate, which I actually do, um, but by all means, don't use black pepper or just use a little bit less black pepper. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and slice my steak. Michelle, what was the temperature of the steak when it came out of the oven? 110 to 112 is what I asked for, but this one was about 114. Excellent, thank you. Great. So like I said, can you bring the computer here? Do you see the amount of juice sitting on the steak? Normally you'd have a puddle, right? After you cook a steak, but this is just such a minimal, I'm gonna pick it up with my hands, I'm sorry, everyone. It's such a minimal amount of juice that's left. And that is because of the reverse here. So I'm using my hands, I'm at home. I would never use them at a restaurant or on the ship. Um, let me go ahead and shut off my sauce because that's ready. I'm gonna go ahead and slice our steak. Oh yes, that's what I was looking for. Yay, a beautiful medium rare all the way through. That looks fantastic. Look how gorgeous this is. I mean, that's really oh. what we're hoping for. You see that there's not really a, a ring. There's just a beautiful pink all the way through it, but it is a medium rare. It's just gorgeous. Let's go ahead and put this on the plate. Uh, we have to thank Amanda because she's doing all kinds of juggling. It's okay, leave it there, leave it there. Juggling, poor thing, trying to follow me. <laughs> around my little kitchen all right so here's our gorgeous steak and i'm going to do something a little a little maybe off the cuff i'm mean, first of all i'm going to add my sauce and then believe it or not this is how my husband and i like to eat it i like for my lettuce to get a little bit soft in the gravy so i put my dressing my my sauce with the sorry my lettuce with the dressing on the side of it and we eat it all together and there you have it my friends and my new friends and my old friends a beautiful reserve uh reverse excuse me steak au poivre with some caesar dressing and crunchy croutons